Hello everybody, this is Stranger Gamer back for part 2 of the last 32 round. Yes, we got 4 more matches to go through here, and if round, well if part 1 was anything to go by, these should be some classics. First, we are going to see Marissa Kurosame going up against Random Shy Ghost. Then we will see Lawrence Steele going up against Morslet. Adolf Adams going up against 7 shots. And MEJP10 taking a cracker heady. So yeah, um, what do I expect from these matches? I'm not sure. Like this one in particular, I feel like this one's a very e could be could go either way. This is, I have a feeling this one's going to be a very tight match. Tight. Uh, this one, mm, yeah, based on form, I'd probably say Lauren is going to win this match. It d just depends on how well the Super Power Power does, doesn't it? This one could be interesting because Adolf Adams' Wild Child team has done reasonably well so far in this tournament, but Seven Shots is on a good run at the minute. Got some impressive wins to get themselves into this position in the tournament, so could go, again, could go either way this one. And then this one, well... This one's probably the most one-sided matchup, in my opinion, at uh, this lot, in favour of Heady. Like, I, I feel like Heady's going to win this match. That's the only match I would probably... Well, this one and this one are the only matches I would I would have the guts to call. And I would probably say Heady is quite a strong favourite in this matchup. But we've seen favourites go out before. We might see it again. Right, enough about that. Let's get on with the first matchup, which is Marissa Kirisame going up against Random Shy Ghost. Right, the old then, in the red corn for Marissa Kirisame, it is the Fukui Kui 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 Raptor. This Fukui Raptor, well, has the standard moveset that appears to be quite common in amongst the winged dinosaurs, and, well, it's worked for it. And it's helped Marissa Kirisame get to the last 32 round. Can they go further in this tournament? It's going to be tough because in the blue corner for Shy Ghost, we have a Spinosaurus. Random Shy Ghost getting through as one of the best fourth place teams, which I wasn't expecting to happen. I thought he would get in the top three based on, based on the start they had as well. They started really well and then he kind of stuttered a bit in the last couple of matches. But can they get... Can they put a run together and go far in this tournament? You could arguably say the hard work has been done already getting to this stage. Well, it is Shy Ghost that indeed gets the first hit. Dino Illusion getting triggered there. Oop, the Taba Cannon getting a bit of triggerage as well. But the Fukui Raptor strikes back there with a hit. And a Cyclone to boot as well. Although, for Fukui Raptor, all the power's in the crypt. Oh, well, there goes the Dino Illusion. Spino would have landed major damage with that crit, but the Dino Illusion said no. Oh, there's another tie. Mm, the Spino gets another hit. Random Shy Ghost taking the lead, but another Dino Illusion has been triggered, which will make things a little bit more difficult for him. Another tie. Well, I don't know. This Fukui Raptor's tie type, so I actually think the Spino will take a lot of damage with those ties. Ooh, Aqua Vortex getting triggered. As is Cyclone. Now, this could be interesting. I believe the Aqua Vortex would normally go through Cyclone, but the Dino Illusion is still triggered, so I don't think the Spino would get off Aqua Vortex. Well, it doesn't need it. It gets the hit anyway. So there goes Dino Illusion. And there goes Aqua Vortex as well. So we're not going to find out. Well, this has been an even match so far. Although, I feel like Shy Ghost has definitely got off more hits. But it is even because of the Dino Illusion. You know, if it weren't for Dino Illusion, Shy Ghost would be, in the, would be one up by now. Ooh, and they might not be one up. Instead, they might be one down. Okay, maybe not, but the Aqua Vortex getting triggered there again. Oh, and again, doesn't need Aqua Vortex because the Spino gets a hit and Random Shy Ghost is 1-0 up. Now, this is an interesting moment of the match here. We have Super Kama coming in. The Awaker Mode is on 2. 
But we have seen this before in this tournament and in the previous one where the, where the first dino is on like really low health but you don't finish it off and end up 2-0 down. We have seen this situation before. But we're not going to see it in this match because the Spinosaurus is indeed going down. And an even match so far, living up to its expectations. Right, as for Shigo's second I know it is the Steg. This near, pretty much full tilt Stegosaurus here. It's going to be a force to be reckoned with. As would the camera be, especially when the camera has the awake mode. Bum, 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 bum. Two Jurassic herbivores here going at it. Ooh, we should do another we should do another grudge match soon. Oh, the camera gets the crit. Camera's crit is quite powerful. That's once. And I think for the first time. No, yeah, well. Marissa Kurasame in the lead. I think for the first time. Well, she was in the lead for a brief mile. Oh, oh, so move the thingy. Oh, it's a tie. Ooh, is Shigo's getting the earthquake? Wow, this really has been an even match. Neither one of our combatants has managed to pull away as of yet. But that could change as it is awakening time. Not Aqua Vortex getting triggered there. Now this could be interesting. Oh, the camera gets the hit. Well, well, well. Kirisame in the lead. Okay then. For Shigo's third I know. It is Megalosaurus. 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 Probably... I would say my favourite design out of the secret dinosaurs. I actually really like it. Ooh, we got some secret moves being triggered. Hopefully we'll see some. Well, for um, Shy Ghost's sake. Needs to get some secret moves going. Oh, well, we got a psychic bind coming. Yeah, that is, that is Super Kana dead and buried. Now then, this could be interesting. We have a clash of secrets now. As Marissa Kurosami's third dino, the Pachycephalosaurus, comes in. Mm, who's gonna have to, who's gonna win this match now? It's, it's gonna be intriguing. I mean, the Megalosaurus did take a little bit of damage, but you know, it's a tiny bit. It might make all the difference, though, especially in such a tight game as this. That little damage could make a difference. Oh, Megalosaurus gets the hit. Shy goes getting themselves back in front. But that's a tie. I think this Pachycephalosaurus might be tie tight. Oh, Megalosaurus getting another hit. Well, Marissa needs to get the next hit, or they're going to be going home. Oh, they do get the next hit. Oh, their secret moves are getting triggered. Oh, it's Megalosaurus getting the hit. Yep, that does it. Random Shy Ghost getting the job done. Advance into the last th last 16 round. And Marissa Kirasami bowing out to the tournament. But that was a pretty close match there. But the random Shy Ghost just pulling away in the end. <laughs> For a moment, I thought it was going to end in a draw. I oh, for sake, no draws, please. But yep, yeah, that is match numero uno. Done. Right then. Now, on to match number two. And that sees... Lauren Steele going up against Mosley. Oh, oh, that was bad wags here. Bad wag. Right, in the red corner for Lauren Steele, we have a para para, super duper para para. Super, 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 duper, 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 para 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 para. 
Yes, Lauren Steele impressing in group. What bloody, what bloody group was she in? Uh, yeah, group H. Group H. <laughs> Give me a break. I haven't looked at the freaking pay groups tables since before Christmas, alright? Alright, as for Moors in the blue corner, we have a Yanjung Azorus. Moors, one of the best fourth place teams, finishing fourth in Group I. Doom, 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 doom. To set up this intriguing match. But yeah, I. I I think Lauren's going to win, but we'll just have to see what we'll Parapara didn't fare well against Yang Zhengazorus in the anime, and I point that out. But can she get some sweet revenge this turn? I guess once. Ooh, with a tie! Oh, ladies and gentlemen, here comes the green impulse. This is a good start from Lauren Steele so far. Flap! Moors get some hits on the board. Oh, well they do, but it's Dino Stuffer, so they're going to be no burning dash. And it's going to be awakening time next round for the Power Power. Wakey, wakey. Oh, is this good to be back in the saddle? I mean, I kind of... Oh, oh, here comes another green impulse, and a 1-0 lead for Lauren Steele. Although, the saving grace for Moors is that Parapara's health will be slashed in half, so she won't have much catching up to do. Alright, so it's good to be back in the saddle. I haven't, I haven't actually recorded anything for pretty much two weeks now. <laughs> but yeah, it was, it was a good break, it was a good break. But I'm ready to get back in the action. Right, as for more second dino, it is Spinosaurus. Can this Spinosaurus get it back in this match, or will Para Para pull away? <sighs> uh, the good thing about doing the knockout rounds is that, you know, I don't have to... I can... T I don't know how to say it. I can take my time with them. You know, it's not like I'm not going to post knockout runs every single day. It'll probably be like every other day or something. That's the schedule I have planned in my head. And by the said schedule, I should be finished just before my birthday, which is late February. But anyway, back to this match, and it's Lauren Seal getting off yet another green impulse. Very impulsive, this power so far. And Moors even get a hit. Come on, Moors, get a hit. Oh, nope, another crit for Para. Okay, yeah, I'm, I think Lauren's going to win this match now. I can't can't see Moors coming back into this. Oh, here comes another green impulse. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Remember the first match when, when um, Blood Moon was basically bullying Lauren? Yeah, well, Lauren's kind of doing the same to, to um, Moors. Well, um, I'm still rooting for your moles. You can still win this. I know this pro Sorolophus will have the type disadvantage when the Kano comes in. Well, if the Kano comes in at this rate, because you can't even get hits on the board. <laughs> come on, moles. You can come back. You can do it. You can do it. See, it's got pro Sorolophus. It's got pro in its name, so it's a pro. Oh, no green impulse for once. Another tie. Hey, Moore's finally got a hit. That's her first proper hit of the match. And well, it's kind of wasted because Paris' HP is below half. And it's probably not going to make a difference in the end because Carnotaurus is coming in next and that thing has a type advantage over the... Um, and it's got Dino Illusion. And well, if it hits with Ninja Attack, then Lauren's basically won. So that's about three reasons why Lauren Steele is going to win this match. Stranger things have happened in this tournament before, so you never know. You never know.
Okay, so one. Okay, okay. It's a hit. It's a hit. It's gonna do not much damage, but it's a hit. At least you put at least Moses is putting up the fight. Okay, that's not too bad, actually. You know, I've seen worse. Oh, oh, there's the Kano hit. But again, you know, that's not the worst case scenario. Because it, it, it wasn't a wind move. Oh, oh, well, there, go, there goes Pro Serolophus. Wow, I... Well, the, yeah, there goes Pro... Yeah, it's Mayfly. He's not going to survive this. Well, um, that was easy for Lauren, wasn't it? As for Moors, going out of the tournament with a whimper. Yeah, that was kind of disappointing, to be honest. I, I, don't, I don't really like those one-sided matchups, but we have to take it as it comes. So, that is Lauren Steele comfortably through the last 16 round, where she will meet Random Shy Ghost. Now then, on to our third match of this session. And this one I'm looking forward to, as it is going to be Adolf Adams going up against seven shots. Well, this should be a good matchup, shouldn't it? Well, I said that about the second matchup, and it was quite disappointing, so hopefully I'm right this time. But anyway, in the red corner for Adolf Adams, it's a polar polar campus. The orange hero itself? Well, our local orange hero, because it was found in this country. The wild child has done well so far. However, in the blue corner for seven shots, it's the Sorofagonax. And it's on the volcano field, so Sorofagonax should have terrain advantage at least. Not that it works that way, but imagine if it did work that way. You had like different battlefields. Kind of like the, D yeah, like the DS game where you had different battlefields where certain dinosaurs have the advantage. That'd be cool, wouldn't it? So like this field, fire dinosaurs have the upper hand. And maybe, uh, well... The desert -y field, the earth dinosaurs have the upper hand. Anyway, enough about that. Oh, balls, I clicked. Okay, it doesn't matter. <laughs> I clicked, I, I, I clicked scissors instead of paper. But it was a tie anyway. Tie suit Adolf Adams, though. He's got the sand trap. But it's seven shots getting the first hit. Um, well, I think. Like, yeah, so no one really has. A clear advantage in this matchup. Ooh, Adolf Adams striking back with their first hit of the match. But yeah, the Sorrow Fagonax has a lot more power to it, and it does have Death Fire, so. Okay, maybe Seven Shots kind of has the up with our Death Fire. But again, it, well, it get, well, it's getting triggered now, and well, one hit from this thing's gonna kill Polar Campers anyway, so. Deathfire's kind of being wasted here. Oh, huh, and he didn't get it off anyway. Polar Canvas. Doing well so far. Look at this. And an Earth Barrier as well. Could have done with that last time to avoid Deathfire. But, well, he avoided it anyway, so it didn't matter. Oh, that's a tie. And that is all she wrote for Sorrow Fagonax. Okay, maybe I kind of lied when I said no one had the clear advantage, because now Adolf Adams will have the type advantage over this Pentaceratops. And it's got the protection of Earth Barrier as well. So seven shots will need at least two hits to kill Polar Canvas, maybe even three. Probably like a hit and a crit would do it. Actually, yeah, two hits I think would do it anyway. Yeah, definitely. But he's got to get those hits. And the longer he doesn't get those hits, the more the Polar Canvas can chip away. Oh, that's a tie. But again, ties favour Adolf Adams. He's got the Sand Trap. Oh, look at this from Adolf Adams. The Wild Child team going wild. It's that, that old cliche, isn't it? You don't finish the first Dino off, you're going to end up 2-0 down. And I think that could be what's happening to seven shots. However, does respond with a Thunder Bazooka. Oh, and it is enough, despite the tight disadvantage, to finish off the Polar Canvas. That could be a big moment for seven shots there. Surviving going 2-0 down. Well, he could, could still go 2-1 down, but, you know, 2-0 down is worse than 2-1 down, isn't it? 
Right, as for Adams' second dino, it is a Rhinoceratops, another wild child. Will this wild child go wild? Oh, that's a tie. But again, ties will suit that off Adams. As he has the lead. And is extending the lead. Boosh. Seven shots in a bit of trouble now. Lillian Cure coming in, healing up the Rhinoceratops. Now things get interesting because seven shots third die. Nope, isn't that a tight gun? Seven shots really needs to get some hits on the board if he wants to get back in this match. Actually, has quite a decent record in knockout rounds. Oh, he seems to do really well, but it's not going well for him so far. Oh, that's a tie. Again, Adolf Adams will take that all day long. Ooh, but seven shots gets off the crit. It's a two platoon crush. This is going to do big damage. Boosh. Wow, they are so huge, aren't they? No counter blitz, so that could be costly for Adolf Adams. As seven shots comes back in this match. Metal Wing coming. And a Rhinoceratops is going to probably go down. Whoosh. Oh, almost went down. Almost went down. The elemental power probably saving him there. Well, not going to save him from that. Three hits from the Anata type. Finishes off a Rhinoceratops. And seven shots pulls it back. And now has the momentum. Okay then, as for Adolf Adams' third wild child, it is a Gondwana Titan. This little sauropod with a big heart needs to prove that it's got a big heart here because seven shots is on a bit of a roll right now. Wow, it's so tiny. I love, I love this thing. It is so tiny. I love it. Well, look at this. Out of nowhere, seven shots in the lead. Ooh, but. Well, that lead lasted about two seconds because Hydro Cutter comes in. And this is going to give Adolf Adams the lead again. And then some. Look at that. Can Adolf Adams finish the job or will seven shots complete the comeback? Oh, it looks like seven shots is gone. It looks like Adolf Adams has got the job done. The Wild Child team winning yet again. Sploosh. Yeah, there it is. Adolf Adams getting the job done. Seven shots bowing out at the last 32 round. Well, that was... I thought seven shots were going to come back there. Because he had the momentum up and but that Hydro Cutter... Enabled Adolf Adams to turn the screw back in his favour and get the job done. A good win there for Adolf Adams as he advances to the last 16 round. And could he be a dark horse going forward? The Wild Child team definitely working. Right then, on to our final match of this session, which is MEJP10 going up against Hedy. Well then, in the red corner for MEJP10. It is an Alpha Kentrosaurus. MEJP10 was winless in my last tournament. Failed to get out the group stage, but this t in this tournament, definitely shown significant improvement. Now it's just a question of how deep they can go. Well, they probably would have rather an easier opponent than Hedy. But Hedy it is, in the blue corner, with a T-Rex, winning five out of five. Although I will say, it, isn't, it wasn't a matter of Hedy dominating all those matches because in those, there were instances in those matches where Hedy could have lost. You know, they've shown weak, they've shown vulnerability and I think in about like three of them he was losing up to, literally up to the last attack. So, you know, it's on, it's on, it's on. 
And as I said, in the knockout rounds, all it takes is one defeat and it's all over. And it's MEGP10 getting off a of Venom fan. I don't know what that was. Good start from Emmy there. Very good start from Emmy. Getting off the crypt. Heady yet to get going, but well, we've <laughs> seen this before, haven't we? And then the Ankylosaurus will come in and sweep for the win. Ooh. Tyrannosaurus getting the first its first hit off. It's the Magma Blaster. Heady striking back. Oh, but I think it's going to be MEGP10 with the 1 0 lead. Oh, no, 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 no. T Rex survived. Remember when the T Rexes were just sweeping everybody in the early stages of my tournament? Not much of that has happened in recent matches. And well, it's not going to be happening in this matchup because the T Rex is going down. Right, now on to Heady's second dino, which is Spinosaurus. And yet again, Heady is losing in a match. But we've seen them come back before, and they're probably going to have to come back again. I should point out that Emmy does have a tight advantage over this Spino when Pentaceratops comes in. Well, if it comes in, it might not come in. This Kentosaurus might sweep for the win. Oh, is it Ty? Could have done with that last round with all them Ty bombs. Okay, nope. The Kentrosaurus will not be sweeping, and Heady will be pulling it back. But as I said, this Pentaceratops is going to have the type advantage over our Spino, so that could be key. Can any GP10 take advantage of that? Although, then again, it is Thunder Driver, so it has to get triggered first for the type advantage to apply. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, let's have a look. Four. Ooh, Eddie getting the hit. Eddie taking the lead for the first time this match. I mean, can you really call it a lead? Not really. Now you can call it a lead, though. It's Futaba Cannon. As I said, because the Thunder Driver isn't triggered, normal damage will be dealt. Yeah. Or maybe not. No, no, it would have said. It would have said. Oh, MEGB10 finally getting a hit there. Thunder Driver will be triggered, but Aqua Vortex will be triggered as well. Now the Pentaceratops has the type of match. Oh! <laughs> I don't know what that was. But there's the atomic bomb. Wow, this has been a very tight match. Just when it looked like Henny was starting to pull away, MEGP10 comes storming back. But it is going to be... Not a 2... Well, no, definitely not a 2-1 lead for Henny. You'll probably need another two of those hits to get a 2-1 lead. Oh, there's one hit. It is Pentaceratops that is giving Emmy GP10 the 2 1 lead. And yet again, Heddy has to play catch up. Well, he's, he's not much to catch up on. The Pentaceratops only has a sliver of health. Right, as for Heddy's third and final dino, it is Ankylosaurus, and well, we all know what that rock roller can do, don't we? How many matches have Heddy snatched with that rock roller? I think three. Snatched it against Toka, snatched it against Dino Hunter, and snatched it against Laos. Will he do it again? Well, he's got to get past this Pentaceratops first. Well, that wasn't too hard. The tie is enough to finish it off, and we are pretty much level pecking. Now then, as for MEGP10's third and final Dino, it is Super Duper Bowie. 
the Awaker mode on three, which could be key to decide who wins this match. Oh, is a crit from the Barry? It's a neck crusher. Boosh. MEJE Ted in the lead, and can they do it? Can they pull off a win over Heady? Oh, well, there's the mole attack from Ankylosaurus. But you know what's more important? The rock roller's been triggered. Okay, that's twice. But yeah, wait the mode on three. So we should see it, actually. We are gonna see it. This kamikaze tackle will not be enough to kill Ankylosaurus, but it will leave Heavy on the brink of defeat. Well, this is it now. Well, normally this is where Heavy would snatch the match with Rock Roller, but the Baryonyx is awakened, so the Rock Roller won't kill it. What will happen here? Oh, that's enough! No snatching the match this time for Heady, and it is MEJP10 pulling off a win against Heady to knock him out of the tournament. Well, um, I didn't see that coming. You win five out of five, and then when it comes to the knockout matches, you lose the first one. <laughs> Typical, isn't it? You win five out of five in the group stage, first knockout match, and you get beat. Uh, that that's. You know, knockout matches, they're intense. Five, winning five out of five in the group stage, it doesn't matter now. You've got to, got to win. You've got to win in the knockout rounds. The rounds are matter. Right then, let's have a look at who's playing who, and we can end the session. Well, you have to say some statement results in this round. Random Shy Ghost getting the win over Marissa Kurosame there. Lawrence Steele quite dominant against Maudslet there. Adolf Adams getting an impressive win over seven shots. And this one, probably the upset of the round so far. MEJP10, done in Heady. Ending that winning streak and ending his days in the tournament. Which means that only Ultima Dino Queen now has a 100% record. Of course, that's going to go bye-bye when, when, when this match happens. <laughs> I don't know, no, I'll, I'll probably be going bye-bye, let's be honest. <laughs> but yeah, some interesting matches here. So it'll be Random Shy Ghost going up against... Lauren Steele and Adolf Adams going up against Emmy JP10. Wow, this is Emmy in Dreamland here. From basically not winning a match in my last tournament to now, I think this is their fourth win in this tournament. And they're in the last 16 round. And if they win this one, they'll be in the top eight. They could, they'll be in the top eight and will be automatically grouped when I do my next tournament. It's really impressive. But yeah, that is enough out of this session so i hope you enjoyed if you did please leave a like subscribe ding the bell make sure you don't miss out on tournament matches in the future and we will and stay tuned for part three where we got these lovely matches and until then this is stranger gamer signing out <laughs>